तत्परम पर्याय विमे ज्ञानलिंगीश्वराय धीमह तो गुरु प्रचोदया Namaste everyone thank you for joining us uh in this episode of songs of the heart this is um a series in which i'm delighted to invite different mentors and teachers of the rishi culture ashtanga yoga gitananda yoga tradition and today i'm here with yoga charini anandi namaste anandi namaste sangita <laughs> all the way from cyprus Cyprus yes where is Cyprus tell us for our international family please Cyprus is next to Greece next to Egypt and Turkey I'm, we are surrounded by Turkish Egypt and Greece hmm? what a beautiful place and we speak greek we speak uh, greek fantastic It's, it used to be a greek country thank you So um I'm delighted to be here with Anandi because your attorney Anandi has been a student and a teacher of the Gitananda tradition for several decades and has been training many people in this parampara and over the years has taught um several forms of our parampara from the hatha yoga to the pranayamas and has developed a holistic spiritual training based on gitananda's teachings in which specifically you anandi have um created an activated vegan food tradition so that you can inspire people to truly contemplate how much prana we receive or not from nourishment uh, through food so um we will be sharing anandi's bio and website in this video in the description so you can check out anandi's work uh, which is highly recommended of course um but let's begin with the topic of our uh, conversation and your anandi so this conversation is around the nada yoga practices in our parampara so um how do you employ how do you practice how do you integrate actually the uh, practices of sound or that revolve around sound in your uh, holistic spiritual training program um the nada yoga it's a very important uh, part of our training because um it's easy for people to understand the effects of the sound it's easier than to tell them think about something or just uh, you know uh, pranayama and nada yoga are very powerful tools and in gitananda yoga we all know we combine pranayama and nada yoga all the time it's uh, it, it, it's it's um, a classical it's it's a common thing to just practice pranayama and nada and sound at the same time i would like to use it more i do not use it i said it uh, so many times i do not use it as much as i want because in in my country there is a christian orthodox tradition tradition which um, doesn't be, believes that only the christian mantras should be i uh, said otherwise the vibration of of our, our body the vibration of the whole country is disturbed this is the um, this is how they believe i out of respect i do not use um mantras that uh, refer to shiva to any um, hindu god i try neutral mantras and of the pranava om i managed to convince the to convince uh, my students that uh, it's the universal sound i think we we analyze it before we do it i want everyone to know what we do um so in this way i used some of the nada yoga tradition like brahmari pranayama we use it a lot the pranava om we use a lot we use the soham and hangsa carefully and only when people are very experienced because i feel they are very powerful 
mantras. So how many hangsa, very powerful mantras, especially hangsa. So um, I do not uh, just give them uh, out in the first lesson. And um, even the pranava om and the mudras, uh, there is a special small ceremony like initiation before they start doing it. And the initiation, of course, um, uh, is the explanation, first of all, and then a small ceremony which uh, makes them um, capable of understanding the vibration and use it properly. A mandralaya also, all this for the advanced, uh, of course, uh, students, or not uh, for the first lesson or even the uh, one year of practice, they don't know about these mantras. Mantralaya is very, very important in our practice. In the second year of the holistic spiritual training, people start learning the bija mandras and the mantras of the of the nadis of each month of each uh, chakra. Uh, but again, uh, it, I take it very, very seriously because I feel that that's my opinion. I don't know if it's true, but I feel that if we overuse the mantras, they lose their power, and if we use them without um, the, the devotion and without initiation, I feel that slowly they they di dissolve, they, they lose their power. So in, in, in the trainings I do, I use very few, I use them very with devotion and seriously, and I think it works very well. Thank yes. you so much. It's such a beautiful, uh, a beautiful sharing. I really um, appreciate that. Uh, some of these mantras are also defined as bijas or seeds. And therefore, it is true that if you throw seeds where the, the terrar uh, is not ready, uh, they may dry, right? Although it is true that they are so powerful that uh, perhaps they will survive us, <laughs> for sure. Um, but regardless, um, you mentioned um, how the Soham Mantra is very powerful. Would you um, be able to share with us some of your experience of witnessing your students' transformation uh, through the use of sound? Not intimate, of course, but you know, whatever you can share, that would be wonderful. Um, I understand when the sound finishes, when the sound works. I understand when the Nada Yoga, the sound works, when people don't want to talk after. When they, are, they have no other option than stay in silence. For me, this is very powerful. When we finish the Pranava Om or mm -hmm. Soham chanting or Hangsa Kriya um, or even Brahmari and people don't want to get up, don't want to move and don't want to talk. They just stay there. That's very powerful for me. Yeah, because the, the teachings um, truly indicate that, and, and our beloved Amaji mentions this in her teachings that the true sound of yoga is silence, right? But the silence that is full of life and this quietude of posture, so they don't want to get up and they don't want to move, right? It's just this quietude of sort of, um, of a pratyahara state, right? That then can lead into, into dharanas. Very, very beautiful. And um, what is silence for you? Silence for me is the opposite of vibration. It creates this polarity. There is no silence if there is no sound vibration before. So after the sound vibration, what follows is the silence. And I can't experience silence if I do not experience sound before. Mm -hmm. And what is the best to experience the sound of a mantra or nature also, to experience mm -hmm. nature. And, uh, and then suddenly the birds stop, like uh, in the Brahma Mahurta time, uh, when there is no sound, there is no, no birds, no people, no cars, and it's just nothing, nothing. 
But to experience this silence, you need to have experience before the sounds. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. This polarity, this is the silence, this polarity, the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a si sound that um, in Cyprus where you live, that is uh, um, a sound that inspires your practice? the wind and the birds mm. sometimes i stop the lesson because mm -hmm. i i live next to trees i'm in town unfortunately still in town but um next to my flat it's uh and there's my studio my flat is my studio it's a uh, big trees so in the spring the the birds come here to mate with each other <laughs> and they start making beautiful sounds and sometimes I just stop what I'm doing. I said, okay, no lesson today. We just listen to the, to the birds. We just concentrate. So we do the uh, Shabda, Shabda Kriya. Hmm? Shabda uh, yes. Kriya. Shabda Pratyahara and Shabda Kriya. Shabda Pratyahara, yeah. yes. We just stay, do nothing. We just listen and we just focus on the birds. This is inspiring. And, Yes. Oh, thank you so much. And what about your memories, like your acoustic memories of your time in the ashram? You've been in the ashram several times uh, as a student and then as a teacher. Um, is there one, I know that there's so many, it's an unfair question, but um, what is one fond memory of sound that you have from your times in the ashram? As you know, the sounds in the ashram are too many. I mean, <laughs> it's a loud country. People think they will go to, to meditate and to and just to stay, you know, in deep meditation. This is a myth. India is very loud if you want to meditate. I mean, and you go to temples and uh, the sounds of the temples are loud. I love. I love the, the chanting uh, of the temples. And, but they have microphones. And you can hear the temples all over the village. <laughs> it is loud. And it's not, it's not uh, you know, it's not quiet and calm. It's, oh, the Mashwaya, oh, the Mashwaya. It's aggressive. It's, it's uh, loud. It's uh, very live. Um, and people uh, think that it has nothing to do. And you can see people in this whole mess, they sit quietly. And this is amazing. When you go to big temples and you see people just sitting in the middle of, of a path, meditating, just or pray, praying. And, and people are passing by, cows, uh, beggars, um, shouting, uh, the sellers to sell stuff. And people are... I love this polarity. I love this. I love to find silence in, in, in noise. I love this. So this is the, the sounds of the temples, the loud, noisy sounds of the temple. <laughs> and um, thank you so much. Yes, I remember that very fondly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and also, um, uh, is there a memory of you engaging with the practices at the ashram that you would like to share with us because some some of the people who will see this episode are people who have been in the ashram many of them are living in india but some of them may see this from a different culture a different country and is there um one specific memory of you engaging with the sound of our gitananda practices when you were in the ashram that you would like to share also as an invitation for other people to um, approach this tradition and practice with us. Okay, something came into my mind. I don't know if I will answer the question, but I think it's a nice uh, opportunity to say, I don't think I ever said it. Um, one, we did the all night uh, Om chanting. We do it every year um, at uh, our guru's guru uh, birthday. It's a, a Swami Kanakananda birthday uh, in February, 
we do an online yeah the second of February yes um, we do an all night on chanting. This is always amazing. And always when I go to the ashram, I try to find ways to, to, to be this time because I love the all night chanting. So it was recently when um, Amaji uh, was, uh, wasn't able to lead the pranav the on chanting. So she asked me to do it, to ask me to lead the on chanting, to be there all night. Um, uh, Dr. Ananda said I will, might come some point, but because she, he had to work the next day, go early to the hospital, he wasn't able to, to stay all night. So he said, uh, start, don't wait for me, and uh, I will, might come some point, I might not come, I don't know, just uh, take, a, take care of it and don't worry about uh, me coming or not coming. So I sat... Uh, I sat in the front where Dr. Ananda used to sit um, and looking at the, in, at the towards Patanjali with my back to the entrance. And the people were sitting around and uh, we were chanting Om. And suddenly I felt on my right side, I don't know how to explain it, it was Om. It was the Om. This vibration, it's like, like a vibration that didn't, doesn't exist in the planet. It's like I experienced Om in the physical level. It was the first time that, because we say Om is, um, is the sound of God, is the sound of the source, is the sound of Brahma. Um, it's the first sound that ever existed, but do we really experience it? I don't know. Uh, it, I, I, we say it, we feel nice after, but I don't know if we really, really experience exactly what it is in its whole form. And that moment I experienced the OM, the creation, it's like it da was downloaded on my right side and I... I couldn't die. It was so, in, so in, in, intense that I had to turn to see, expecting to see something. I don't know what. I turned my, my eyes to the right. It was Dr. Ananda. <laughs> it was Ananda. <laughs> it was an amazing, amazing experience. I don't know how he did it. Uh. I never told him. I never asked about it. But he gave me this experience. Yes. Oh, what a beautiful story to share. Thank you so much. Ah, yes. Mm. Well, Anandi, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And um, mm, so beautiful that we're able to connect in different languages and different time zones and different spaces and places. So uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share about any of these practices? I think the practices, there are three preconditions in order to fill them. Or three, how say, help, helping tools. hands, tools, tools. Mm. tools that we can uh, use uh, and uh, will make us uh, feel the sound and the nada, the vibration uh, better. The first is, uh, we said it, silence after or before, after, mostly after the silence. So you create this polarity, vibration and then no vibration, silence. The first tool is silence. The third, the second tool is stillness. So then the vibration will not spread up. And now this is strange, but you know my connection with food. So I will say it. The third is fasting. Mm. So fasting, because the body doesn't do, the, the, doesn't take energy from the, um, from the digestion. So digestion is not there to vibrate the body in a certain way. The intestines are not there to just, uh, you know, move the food out it's uh, just there is an inner stillness 
when there is no food in the digestive system. And this will make the sound, this will make the energy move towards the nervous system. And then the sound will empower this. So fasting and nada, it's a very good combination in my opinion. And yes, so stillness, silence, fasting, the three tools. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you. That makes so much sense, actually. <laughs> All of these make a lot of sense. And um, so, of course, you have um, uh, developed, uh, studied, practiced, and developed a system of nutrition that is um, based on a vegan, uh, activated vegan diet. And so, um, you have also noticed the relationship that there is yes with fasting and also with specific foods and sound uh, as, as a vibration um i'm pretty sure um right that is there or, or i never yeah. thought of that it seems thought about that. well i just thought about it now <laughs> <laughs> i thought about no food and sound but food and sound I don't know because maybe because I connect uh, very much the food with the smell, mm -hmm. uh, not so much with the sound. So I haven't thought of that. I don't know how to connect it. Maybe I'll come back to yeah, you. Yeah, and actually, but perhaps we can uh, we can uh, do a research project together because yeah. uh, we can maybe test. Certain, yeah. uh, certain aspects. I, I wonder if there's a relationship, I wonder, I'm sure there is a relationship between the density, the vibration, the liquidity and all of that with uh, the qualities of one's voice because that's, you know, the, the voice is a physical tool anyway. So fascinating. Anyways, yeah. uh, thank you, Anandi. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, the knowledge, the experience, all of that, all in one person. That is you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And um, Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm a big fan of your voice. You know that. I told you. Singing, talking, whatever. I'm just a big fan. So... I'm a big fan of your podcast. Uh, I have used it many times, the Bija Mantras. Uh, I use your Bija Mantras, the recorded ones that you have. Well, yes, yes. In, in my, uh, in, when I teach the Bija Mantras, I use your podcast to have it at the background and explain to people what is that. I'm a big fan. You know that going to make me weep now out of gratitude. I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so, oh, it means the world, truly. Thank you. It means a lot because uh, you are a senior and a mentor to me in our tradition. So I really respect that. Thank you so much. Um, Ah, okay. <laughs> so we want to thank everybody for listening and for being here with us. And uh, again, thank you so much, Anandi. Do check out Anandi's Yoga Charini Anandi's uh, program and uh, classes and teachings. The link will be below. And um, again, thank you all so much. Thank you, dearest Anandi. And thank you. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>